In the last video, I showed you how to apply toner to a piece of sterling silver using the toner transfer method. In this video, I'll concentrate on the actual etching process. You can etch sterling silver using a chemical called ferric nitrate. I get my ferric nitrate from a company called Science Company, and you can find it online and I get the 500 gram bottle. You can see that it is a kind of a purple crystal and you mix this with water to get your etching solution. There's also a way that you can electro etch but for my process I just use the ferric nitrate. Ferric nitrate will etch sterling silver but not copper. For copper you want to use ferric chloride. So I've mixed some up already and I keep it in a container, a plastic container. I use this particular container because I can suspend my pieces in it and I typically can use it over and over for quite a long time. As the chemical gets diluted you will find that it takes longer to etch or it doesn't etch as well. I start this by putting it in a hot water bath to heat up the solution. You could probably also use a crock pot but I just find it just as easy to put a pot in my sink and fill that up with hot water. My water gets very hot. So I just fill my pot up with hot water and put the container with my ferric nitrate solution in the hot water bath and let it heat up. I usually let it heat up while I'm putting the resist on the back of my piece but I've already done that so I'm going to go ahead and fill this up and let it set for about 10 to 15 minutes before I get started. I didn't mention this earlier, but the formula that I use for the etching solution is 400 milliliters of distilled water to 300 grams of the ferric nitrate. You always want to add the crystals to the water, never the other way around. I mentioned that I suspend my pieces. I typically just use a wooden chopstick to suspend my pieces into the solution. Now we will just wait for this to warm up. This is the piece that we applied the resist to in the previous video. We just want to suspend the piece into the ferric nitrate solution and we can do that using the chopstick. We don't want the piece to touch the bottom of the container and we want to make sure that it is below the surface of the solution. So we just tie the string around the chopstick and secure it where it will be suspended in the middle of the solution. Once we have that ready, because we've allowed this to set for a while, I want to go ahead and heat up that water again. So now we want the piece to set for 20 minutes. So we need to set a timer for 20 minutes and then we'll come back and check on its progress. While we're waiting on that, I'm going to go ahead and get a couple of containers of water ready so that we can rinse the piece. The first container just has water in it. 
and the second container will add water and some baking soda. And the baking soda will allow us to neutralize the ferric nitrate. And you'll find that you use baking soda a lot, so you might as well keep a big box. So just put a couple of scoops of the baking soda in the water. Just stir that up. We'll be needing that later. I'll be using this soft makeup brush to brush off the solution each time I check it. So I go ahead and set that to the side so that I'm ready to go. We'll come back when the timer goes off and check our progress. So through the magic of video editing, it has been 20 minutes, and now we can check the progress of the piece. So we can just remove it from the solution, and using the soft brush that we have, we just gently wipe off the solution. We do this to remove any residue that has collected on the piece. And this helps to get rid of the striations that sometimes occur. So we want to rinse our brush in the baking soda and water solution and then the clear water and we can brush it again. And we see there's not much progress on the piece at this point. But the next time we check it, we will definitely see some progress. So we want to suspend the piece back into the solution. Rinse my fingers off. And at this point, I'm going to heat the water back up again. And we heat the water because the etchant works much faster if it's a heated solution. Now we can go set our timer for 20 more minutes and we'll check back on the progress. So we are now 40 minutes into the etching and I only etch my pieces for an hour. So we're going to check the piece again. And this is when you will start to notice a considerable difference. So using our soft brush, we're going to remove the etchant again. And at this stage, you can visually see the etching has really started to take hold. So far our toner resist is holding up quite nicely. And I'm not seeing any of the toner coming off of the piece, which is what we want to see. And again, I'll heat the water back up. 
You never want to dispose of the ferric nitrate solution down your sink. It is harmful to the environment, which is why we have the separate containers so that we can place the piece and rinse out our brushes and stuff in the baking soda solution in the plain water. And we, we will need to dispose of those through whatever hazardous waste process your city has, but do not pour this stuff down the sink. Now we set our timer for the last 20 minutes. So that was the last 20 minute session for the etch. And now it's time to check and see just how well our etching did. So as we did before, we wipe off the excess solution. And our toner held up through all of those etchings. And I've tried to extend the etch another five to 10 minutes. And every time that I do, the toner will bubble up at that point. So one hour is safe as far as for me and my process. And at the temperature that I keep my solution and the strength that I have it. And it does quite well. And you can see, hopefully you can see that uh, the etch and how deep it is. We'll get a better idea of how it looks when we clean off that excess toner. So I'm just dipping the piece into the baking soda water to neutralize the ferric nitrate solution. You don't want it to continue etching, so we definitely want to neutralize it. And you should be able to feel how deep that etch is. I'm just going to rinse it well in the clean water. And then I'll take it over to my ultrasonic and clean it with the ammonia solution that I have. But you should be able to see that it's a nice clean etch. And all of our toner is still intact. At this point, if you see bubbles in the toner and it's starting to flake off, you may have some pitting in your piece, but typically it's just a surface and you can sand that off. I'm just gonna close up my solution and set it aside to use the next time. Now we're back here at the ultrasonic cleaner with my ammonia solution. I've cleaned the piece, I've dried it off, and you can see that it did etch on the sides, but there's not a lot of material that was removed. So it didn't hurt that I didn't protect the sides. I still have plenty of material I'll remove the resist from the back side. 
and we shouldn't see any etching on the back. And that did a really good job. That vinyl did protect the back side. Scratches and all. So now we want to remove the toner, the remaining toner, from the piece. And we can just dip it in our heated ammonia solution and use the soft brass brush and just give it a good scrub and that should remove the toner. Might take a little elbow grease but you should be able to remove it all. And now we should get a good idea of how well the piece actually etched. That looks pretty good to me. Now we can just go rinse the piece off, dry it off, and take it back to our work surface. So now that we have it rinsed and dried off, we can get a better look at the etching. And that etched pretty well. And as you can see, I've got an outline now that I can follow to cut out my piece. So it'll make it quite easy for me. And I'm curious to see how thick the piece of metal is now. We started at 1.02 millimeters. And now we're at 0 0.92 millimeters. So we can see that we definitely did take material away. I hope these videos have helped you in some way and I hope that you try this etching process. It's a lot of fun and you can get some really cool and interesting results. So if you like this content, please subscribe to my channel to see additional videos that I have planned.